Good day, dear learner. I know you are excited to learn again, so let me help you deal with your quarter two week five lesson. Once again, I am teacher MD. Do you have any idea about the latest news or issues in our country? Let me give you one. Watch this video from CNN Philippines and see what is it all about. November 15 marks the beginning of the school year's second quarter. The Education Department has decided it will also be the first day of the planned pilot run for in-person classes. In a Senate Basic Education Panel hearing, the DepEd said the pilot will run until end of January next year. The agency targets to reopen more schools by March. We will already be preparing for assessments of uh, possible expansion schools uh, so that uh, by the time we are able to submit the report to the president and the recommendation, hopefully in favor of bigger expansion. Only 59 public schools so far passed the health department's assessment to carry out face-to-face -face classes. Most are located in Visayas and Mindanao, in the provinces of Masbate, Aklan, Antique, Cebu, Zamboanga Cebugay, Zamboanga del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Sarangani, and North Cotabato. The DEPED reiterated that only fully vaccinated teaching and non-teaching personnel will be included in the pilot. Based on its latest data, 57% or over 580,000 out of its almost 1 million personnel have been inoculated against COVID-19. As early as July, ay nanawagan na po kami talaga sa Department of Education. And even last year pa po, no, sana yung vaccination po ay uh, i-prioritize yung mga teachers. Nagugulat ako na sobrang babaho dun sa DepEd. Kasi dun sa mga ibang departamento, ang tataas na nung vaccination rate nila. Eh, para ko sa akin, ang teachers natin are, are isa sa important frontliners. Senators also questioned the DepEd's timeline, asking why the agency did not plan to open more schools sooner. They're walking around, hand in hand, going to their neighbor's house, unsupervised, walang pasok. So that's my, that's my question. Can we disabuse ourselves of that image that we are taking them from a very safe space to suddenly an exposure to school? There were questions too on how effective the pilot run could be if schools in the national capital region are not included. Health officials explained reopening schools in urban areas is trickier as these mostly remain at moderate or high risk for COVID-19. AC Nichols, CNN Philippines. What is the issue all about? Yes, it is about the pilot face-to-face -face classes in the Philippines. What is your stand about it? How did you react when you heard about it? Of course, some might agree while others might disagree on this idea. And that is only one of the issues in the Philippines nowadays. As individuals, it is normal for us to respond to different kinds of issues around us. When responding or expressing opinion towards an issue, it is important to be able to identify the writer's or the speaker's claim. A clear understanding of someone's beliefs or ideas about something enables others to give appropriate feedbacks or reactions. This lesson focuses on deeply understanding what a claim is and how claims are basically classified. Identifying one's claim is an essential skill when expressing opinion on a certain issue, especially in the field of writing. Claim refers to a clear assertion of a person's ideas, opinions, or propositions. The use of claims may serve the purpose of convincing or persuading readers or a specific audience to agree with a specific stand or rationale on an issue. Generally, there are three classifications of claims. See this example. The 2020 national budget amounting to 4.1 trillion pesos, which is 12% larger than the 2019 budget, can really help in boosting the economy through various infrastructure projects. 
what is the issue or claim all about? Yes, it is about the budget and possible results of implementation. This presents facts about budget allocations, then the latter statement can be proven or disproved after the actual implementation. Thus, this statement can be categorized as claim of fact. Let us have another example. Being the richest city in the country, the city of Makati can implement better projects needed by its citizens. The claim is about implementation of projects in Makati. Actually, there is no evidence presented that it is the richest city in the country as well as that better projects can be implemented on it. Yet, this can be proven by using verifiable evidence. Hence, this can also be categorized or classified as claim of fact. Claim of fact states something about things in the past, in the present, and in the future. It deals with ideas or claims that can be proven or disproved with the help of factual evidence. Lastly, claim of fact basically is basically debatable yet verifiable. Let us have our third example. Taking vitamins is better than eating fruits and vegetables in terms of boosting our immune system. It is a claim about boosting one's immune system. Taking vitamins is compared to eating fruits and vegetables. This claim is based on one's opinion or judgment. This may be true to some but not to all, thus making it a claim of value. Similarly, the statement, if I were to choose, I would prefer the work-from-home scheme than working in the office as this gives me more family time, is a claim of value since it presents one's judgment on which setup is better. For some, it can be work from home, but for some, it can be working in the office. By looking at the examples, it is necessary to remember that claim of value presents an assertion as to whether something is good or bad, or one concept or idea is better than another. Claim of value emphasizes and weighs the benefits of the subject matter and it is debatable in nature since everyone has his or her own opinions or judgments about a particular issue. Moving on, let us have another example. The issue is about addressing concerns against COVID-19. What idea is suggested here? Yes, it suggests that City Health Department must learn from how other cities successfully address the concerns against COVID-19. Hence, it is a call to action. Making it a claim of policy. Claim of policy supports that an action should or should not be done to address a certain case or policy. Policy claim indicates that an action should be carried out either in support or in opposition of a particular argument. Look at our last example. The writer of the claims proposes revision on the scope of the implementation of the policy, and that is it should be extended to the elementary level. Hence, the claim shows that an action should be done making it a claim of policy. Is everything clear now? You just have to remember the three classifications of claim. Claim of fact, claim of value, and claim of policy. And remember them through this diagram. Claim of fact can be proved or disproved. It states something in the past present, or future, while claim of value presents an assertion as to whether something is good or bad, or one concept or idea is better than another. And remember that claim of fact and claim of value are both debatable. However, claim of fact is verifiable. Meanwhile, claim of policy supports that an action should or should not be done to address a certain case or policy. We could relate it with claims of fact and value in a way that your call to actions 
or suggestions might be based on facts or based on what you value. What is common among the three? So they are all classifications of claims. And that's it. I hope that you will apply all the things that you have learned today in the essays or paragraphs that you will be writing soon. Again, happy learning!